and it had to have been uh, maybe like two or three years since I've been here and I had been meaning to get here for some games just but with filming and all this other kind of stuff I, I just sometimes I couldn't do it Arizona Arizona State yeah Arizona State was probably my uh, the best game I ever had here that was my favorite part my favorite part was the police escort we would get from the hotel and then we would get up and we pull up and you kind of felt presidential and then you get out and then you put your headphones on and you got like that I'm ready for game I'm ready for action and you got the fans and the parents and everybody just sitting above wishing you well no more smell of hot dogs and that 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 sweet popcorn that you could smell. That's the thing I hate it though, is after a game you're so hungry and that aroma of the stadium food just, you'd be like, man, I could eat freaking everything in the stadium. It was Fresno State, it was the first game I ever came to. And I remember my dad and we rented a Lincoln Town car. Do they even still make Lincoln Town cars anymore? They probably don't. Um, Lincoln Town car, it was a white one, and we were driving down, and I remember my oldest brother going, you don't mess with Jack Murphy Stadium. You don't mess with Jack Murphy Stadium. How am I not able to navigate through my own home? Oh, it's right here, it's right here. And then you walk this way. You walk this way. Woo! Hey, there's an echo in here. There was so much commotion going on on game day, you couldn't, you couldn't hear the echo. Gosh, let's see, is it still there? They bricked it off? They bricked it off! No, no. So the buses, I mean, this is massive. I mean, the buses will pull up here and you would get off You'd have your bags, your clothes, you'd have your jumpsuit on. I mean, I came through here as a professional and, you know, when I played as the, with the Raiders, played with the Chargers, I played a lot of games here inside of Qualcomm. And uh, you take your bag and you just have this walk and you just, should I show you guys the walk? I'm gonna show you the walk. I can't even talk because it's like game mode. You don't talk when you're in game mode, you just walk like this. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take you guys all the way to the locker room, but this is the walk. It's the main entrance. This is the offensive side's locker room. So offense was on this side. Training room is right here. Ah! So, crazy story. I'm getting, I'm getting emotional, I've been thinking about it, but. So this was the spot where I just went bananas. Cause uh, this is where I was told that I lost my 2000 season after that, um, after that game against Arizona State, I tore my Achilles. And then it was, uh, it was that next game against Illinois where I found out that my Achilles was torn. I had a biking accident that snapped and severed my Achilles. And I was sitting on this table right here when the doc, doc did a little test and I remember he's squeezing my calf and he goes, oh, you ripped, you tore, you severed your Achilles. And I was just like, oh, I mean, I was just like, no, and I just, I'm, I'm just tearing up everything in here, but I was really, I was really messed up because I thought that was going to be the end of my football career. I thought that was it. But yeah, this is our training room. This is where we came in, the ice tub. Anybody in here? This is, uh, oh boy. <clears throat> this is my locker right here. This is my locker. This is my corner locker right here. I didn't like anybody to talk to me. 
just wanted to go through my routine. I wanted to kind of enjoy it and I like to get focused. You play around a little bit, but you want to get focused, get your tape, and you have to have the same routine every time. Otherwise, it was just like you felt like you were going to have a bad game. My brother locker was over here. I remember that. I remember Jerome Haywood, Joe Mar Butler. If you are a fan of sports and movies, you can't forget the name Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. And coach said we had a special guest, a special person come in and give us a talk beforehand. And I didn't know who, none of us knew, you know, you're, you're in game mode. Yeah, yeah. And he, Carl Weathers comes through here and he walks through here and I'm sitting right over there, right at the edge of my locker. And he stops like right here. And he gives us this massive speech. And for those of you guys who don't know Carl Weathers, that's Apollo Creed. Yeah. And he played for the Raiders, played for San Diego State, and he comes in here and he gives us a talk right here. He's standing right here. If I had a measuring tape and I could rewind back to that, he's standing right here. And we're all kind of huddled here. I'm right over there. And he looks at us and he gives us pilot, I mean, the silent, dramatic pause. And he goes, there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. And it's, I'm, bruh, we murdered them that day. I mean, it was, I mean, you can't give a Rocky line exactly. from Apollo Creed and, <laughs> and take an L. There is no tomorrow. Man, that had us so jacked up, man. I, I will forever remember that speech from Carl Weathers. This was a big deal in 2006. And, you know, not, I, I got to give props to Marty Schottenheimer for, for taking a chance on me. But I had gotten cut from the Raiders in 2005. And I set out that year, not on a team. And I was like, man, I was sitting in Mission Valley, just right across the street from the stadium. And I was sitting in my house and I'm going, I can't take this anymore. So I said, you know what? I woke up early in the morning. I went through my morning routine. I said, I'm gonna go to the charger facility before anyone gets there, before the coach gets there. And I remember I walked through the front of the facility and Georgette, who's uh, the receptionist is sitting there. And I said, uh, hey, Georgette, uh, I, my name is Akbar Bajabia Miller. I'd, I'd like to talk to Coach Schottenheimer. She goes, do you have an appointment? I go, no. She goes, oh, okay. Uh, what is this regarding? Hey, I'm a free agent. I'd like to play for the Chargers. She goes, okay, leave your name and your number here and we'll have someone get in contact with you. And I thought, of course, this is a nice way to saying, get out. And as I turn around, I'm walking out and Marty Schottenheimer is walking in. And like my heart's beating. I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? I say, if you don't speak up now, it's never gonna happen. And I'm like trembling in my voice. Hey coach, my name is Akbar Basha Biamela. He's like, I know who you are. I go, um, I'm here in town and I'd love to be a charger. Uh, I've just been waiting. He goes, let me talk to the scouting department and we'll get back to him. This is like late in the season. So this has had to have been 2005. This is probably like December-ish. Yeah, December-ish. And uh, that March during the off season, got a call. Got a call, came in, did the OTAs, did the mini camp, did the training camp, got cut, then came back on the team in that special season, 14 and two, uh, that season. And uh, yeah, so thank you to Marty Schottenheimer for believing in me right off the streets, literally right off the streets. I just walked up unannounced and uh, he gave me that chance. But I think it goes to saying, you know, sometimes when you believe in yourself um, and when you have doubt, sometimes you gotta step forward like, I think about that now, like that's pretty nuts to walk up to a professional team's office and they'll give me a shot. Um, but my locker was right over here. This is, uh, but it's kind of cool to know that I went from the locker room next door to the locker room uh, over here. But uh, this is, this is my locker right here. This is my locker. Yeah, this is all right. First person to greet me as a, as a Charger, how about this? LaDainian Tomlinson, one of the coolest people ever. Jay Watt, what's up, man? That's, that's, that's Justin Watts, that's, that's an Aztec. What's up, man? Man, we're inside this, uh, this, the Chargers locker room, man. We're just taking a tour of the stadium. 
before uh, before it all goes down, man. Dang. Do they still have the 50 yard line out there? They have the paint. From this to Aztec Stadium, that's going to be special. That's going to be special. You know, we used to always dream, the truth is, as beautiful as this stadium is and as, historic, as historical as this stadium is, we used to always dream to have our own intimate space. 75,000 stadium seats? 75,000 seats here? 72,000 seats here. sound that's crazy my routine would be come here and I do a jog around the field do my warm-up lap and then I'd always go on that side to do all like my stretches and my all my warm-up stuff because I wanted to be kind of away from all the hoopla so I could get in my zone I got to give credit to uh, Leroy Glover because I actually got my stance oh, like Big Glove. from Leroy Glover because I used to love the way he got into his stance. Leroy Glover would always be like this. Yeah. That was him. So. Yeah, he would always go like this and then kind of, I was like, man, that's so cool, man. He would spend time with me. He showed me all his tapes from uh, John Randall and the stuff that even when he went on to the NFL. And uh, so I got my stance. I always had to pull up my tights to make sure I was ready. And it'd be like this and you got to wiggle your fingers. Right here, and you gotta go, and you gotta get your there, and it's gotta be. Bah, 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 bah. You gotta get off. 